Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, and we're wrapping up uh, a a specific little mini-series looking at some attributes of Jesus in the book of Colossians chapter 1. And uh, we're going to wrap this up. I want to read the whole passage again for us so we can kind of catch what the Apostle Paul is trying to communicate. And as we look at the final two verses of this section, and in uh, Colossians 1, starting in verse 15, he says this, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. We're going to look at these two verses together. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. Now, I can't get into every detail in these uh, two verses. There's a lot of density here, but I want to just kind of capture some big ideas from this. And the first is that this verse 19, in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. This is an incredibly important verse. Um, All the verses in scripture are important. All of them, especially in this, are important. But this verse has informed so much theological formation throughout the years and so much understanding of the nature of Jesus has come out of this. Because we understand that Jesus came incarnate. He was a human being who lived a human life and died a human death. Now, we also understand that he rose from the grave three days later. And as we understand his nature, this verse also tells us that he was fully God. Now, the the tension that has existed to understanding is, okay, he was God, but he was man. Does that mean he's 50% man, 50% God? Not according to this. It says the fullness of God dwelled in him. He was fully God. Yet we also understand just from our account of the Gospels and his life that he was fully man, experiencing all the temptations, all the realities of living a human life, Yet, as Hebrews 4 tells us, he did all of that yet without sin. Now, these two realities are so important because they both combined allow us to understand what it highlights next. And the reason for all of this, Paul gives us a purpose statement, a a reason for all of this. And it says that through him, he came to reconcile to himself all things. And later he says, by making peace by the blood of the cross. The reason this all matters, the reason his humanity and his what we call divinity or the fact that he was fully God matters is so that he could reconcile us to himself. Our sin creates a separation. It creates a a, a strain, uh, a damaged relationship between us and our creator. But Jesus came and shed his blood on the cross so that we could be reconciled to him. So today I just want you to, to... just reflect on the, the enormity of what Jesus has done for you and how the, the God of the universe came in, in human form and didn't give up any of his divinity, but fully took on the realities of our world so that he could reconcile us to himself. That's what he came to do because he cares enough about you to have a relationship with you, to find unity and reconciliation in the person that he created, you and me and everyone else that he came to die for. Today, reflect on that. That God loves you. God loves you enough to die for you. That God loves you enough to, to create a plan from the foundations of this world for you. You have value, you have purpose, you have worth in the eyes of your creator. So I pray that this would just draw you to Jesus, that this would encourage you to worship, to to bow your life down to him and say, Jesus, you love me this much. I'm going to love you in return and follow you with all that I am. Because that is what Jesus came to do. We'll see you next time, Calvary.